Hello, I'm the Red Monk, and welcome to my uh, temple. And today, I'm going to tell you the unfiltered, untilted truth on capitalism. This is the honest truth. It isn't commonly spoken of because it's dismaying and really isn't a good filler for ads and clicks. I honestly do not like political views, and I could be considered a bit of a leftist myself. Only fair I disclose that, but all I'm doing in this video is stating facts to allow you to see the world for what it is, and uh, for some entertainment as well. I don't care about your opinions, and I'm sure you don't care about mine. Okay, and uh, no turf wars in the comment section. If you have any thoughts, totally share, but don't let it devolve into flaming and shit. So yeah, since the beginning of time, power systems for humans have been very corrupt. Ever notice how all leading figures in any government have been ultra billionaires? It's a weird coincidence. Power. It's an addictive drug. Now, you have to understand, the president doesn't get up in the morning and think, gee, how could I improve the daily life of each citizen? Hell fucking no. You know, I'm certain he wishes all of us well. You know, happy citizens are less likely to attempt assassinations. But that's low on the priority list. Anyone in power has one goal, to stay in power, by any means possible. Literally, by any means. How do you think they got there in the first place? There are so, so many people who would kill for that spot. A position in power? Literally, anything they do. Now, the person who managed to secure that spot in power as a pack of a thousand wolves trying to do anything by any means to reach that spot. Do you think they waited in line, followed all the rules, and did everything morally acceptable? Of course not. It's impossible. Since one can break the rules to get further ahead than people who don't, they get ahead. Most, not everyone, but a wide, wide majority of people in power fucked over and slit throats to get to that spot. Only the people who take every advantage and every possible undercut to get on top, get on top. Now, what's this shortcut? It's capitalism. No, that is not an opinion. Capitalism is a tool for the people in power to stay in power. And that's the people in power's only goal, to stay in power. And capitalism is how they do it. By nature, uh, capitalism has a sort of a uh, hiccup. Now, I'd say flaw if I wasn't trying to be so untilted, but a uh, hiccup sounds as far less biased. And to describe this hiccup, we shall do some uh, deep thinking, so bear with me. Fluidity, my guy. So I'm moving my hand. You see that? Pretty neato. Pretty neato. Now the fourth dimension is time. Just like stacking a ton of 2D dimensional pieces of paper atop each other to create a third. Uh, see this paper? It's uh, flat. It has a uh, length and width. Uh, stack some papers on it over and over and over again to create a third dimension. And uh, boom, you get height. The third axis. So, what happens when you stack a shit ton of uh, three-dimensional objects over each other over and over and over again? You get time, right? So, uh, back to moving my hand. So, as time passes, my hand is in different locations. It moved. And the four-dimensional object of myself two seconds ago to right now when I finished moving my hand, my hand takes up this whole space. My hand was in motion, making movement and covering distance, and it took up more space in the fourth dimension. It got bigger. It became more of a hand. Now, let's apply that to money. If money moves around, you know, in a stimulated, lively economy, that money becomes bigger. It's called fluidity economics. Money moving around is more money over time. When you are spending money, it's not like, poof, the money disappeared. No, it goes right back into the system and gets spent again. 
That's why I personally support uh, UBI, which is a universal basic income. UBI is more money in the system. Not only it improves the livelihood of each citizen, it stimulates the economy. But that's just an opinion of mine. Hey, I've only stated facts this entire time. It's a fact that I have that opinion. And that mechanic of money that benefits as it moves around is well described by a, a universal basic income. That's one of the core fundamentals of how money works. You know, back in the ye old days, before a global economy, the way to get powerful was to have land, a limited resource. There was only so much land, and armies of thousands of people would run at each other with spears so their rich king could own and control that land. But that is happening less so today. We are still burning each other for resources. Don't get me wrong. But with money, you can crowdfund and have this money circulate to allow people to become powerful without murdering each other. Do you think we at all changed since then? Do we move past the medieval times when thousands of men would kill, kill each other over power in very painful ways? Did humans stop and think, maybe we should stop invading people for land? Of course not. Humans are just as brutal as they've ever been. But uh, with money, fluidity economics, and crowdfunding, it just became an easier, less violent way to get power. That's the honest truth. There, is, there are still limited resources like oil in that one mineral in all computer chips that people are murdering each other over to get right now as you watch this video. And if money would disappear, we'd go right back to killing each other over land. Again. Capitalism promotes herding money, to stockpile as much money as possible, to get capital. That's why they call it capitalism. Yeah, but money needs to move around to circulate for others to get capital themselves. It's a paradox. Capitalism encourages getting as much capital and to stagnate it under your name. But money grows over time as it circulates. It's a very unstable, unsustainable hiccup. Now, let's look at some paper clips. Hmm. Hello, I'm the Red Monk, and welcome to my uh, bed. This is gonna click so I get the camera angle to work, so we're here. But uh, we got some paper clips. And we're going to use these paper clips uh, to describe this uh, momentum thing, this me momentum mechanic, I guess you could say. But uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick up two random paper clips and then connect them. I'm just going to keep doing that and we're going to see what happens. All right, so I'm going to mix them up. Random paper clip. Random paper clip. I'm just gonna connect them like that into a chain. Random paper clip, random paper clip. And we're just gonna connect them like that. Alright, so we picked up one of the paper clips in the chain. And we'll pick up another paper clip. And just connect it to the chain so it becomes three. The longer a paper clip chain is, the more chance I have to pick it up, so the bigger chance the chain becomes longer. So the longer I do this, the longer the paper clips get. And the longer paper clip gets, the more chance I have to pick it up. Ah, uh, the big paper clip. I like to call it the capitalism heat death. <laughs> the ground state. 
A monopoly is when all the paper clips are in a one giant chain. And this is what capitalism encourages, for one individual to have all the money, and for it to stagnate under their name. It's unsustainable as money needs to move around to make money. When you pay your workers very low and have little money spent towards their safety, you are literally saving money. Less money is spent to create your product and you can sell it for less, undercutting your competition at the cost of the well-being of your workers. When you have no environmental safety regulations, you spend less money in production and you can sell for far less, undercutting the competition at the cost of global warming. Now, here in the United States, we have actual laws and regulations for uh, child labor and some laws for environmental safety. But man, you go to Russia or China, there's none. You know, made in China. Now, why do you think it's cheaper to make all these products and ship them across the globe? It's child labor, low wage, and unsafe working conditions. By any means possible, to the people in power to stay in power, to undercut the competition, to sell products for less and make more profit. This is a real thing that happens. I'll uh, spare the Marxist rant, but if everyone had to have a high minimum wage, the advantage of undercutting the competition would go away. Okay, now I will break the unbiasedness for one second. I do not like child labor. I do not support it. Okay, now I'm breaking all the unbiasedness. I have to. Okay, uh, skip to uh, this, that time in the video if you don't want to hear an opinion. But for all the human lives lost, I cannot not say this. Uh, Andrew Carnegie is a murderer, right? Manslaughter is murder. And many, many people died in his factories and many more suffered shitty living conditions in and near his steel factories here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania around the 1800s. I don't care if you buy an art museum before you die. That doesn't unorphan children. It doesn't change the quality of life for the shit jobs you forced upon them. You know, I can see him in the center ring of hell, you know, where he's like frozen and getting tortured and shit in the afterlife. Ah, it calms the soul to see him burn. Now, I hear a lot of a uh, five minutes ad filler tell you, you what you want to hear so you buy my merch YouTube channels called uh, Leftist Globalist. A huge factor of uh, socialism is uh, teamwork, you know, coming together, the power of numbers. So they call Marxists a globalist, but they couldn't be further from the truth. Uh, capitalism supports globalism because capitalism supports the people in power. The people in power want to sustain and increase their power by expanding across the globe. It's greed. The global economy has existed for many, many years, and many of the rich worldwide corporations transcend across many countries. Capitalism says to get big, you gotta be big. Now, do you think a corporation will limit itself to one country? Globalism and capitalism are very alike. Uh, globalism is not as benefiting for the daily citizen. Uh, smaller divisions of power is better for the citizens. Do you think weed should be illegal? Do you think it should be legal? will move to a place that has regulations that align with your own. Not everyone wants to live the same. We are all different people, and with smaller divisions of power, we can live with other like-minded people. When the forefathers made America, they named it the United States of America. Their intention was for each state to be their own sovereign nation. Smaller divisions of power to allow specialized government for the different needs of each citizen. United States. Alright, this is a speculation of mine. 
under smaller divisions of power, a free market would become more free to the average citizen as larger companies would be smaller and their uh, produce and bulk advantage would also be limited. But the rich globalists in power took over and that intention of America isn't really present much anymore. Globalism, the powerful's intention to stay in power, and capitalism are very much one and the same. I believe the only way for us to exist is how we're existing right now. There is no such thing as other possibilities. The electrons uh, spun in whatever way to lead us to where we are right now. And where it's going is where it's going. The human power structure is heavily based on having the powerful stay powerful. The rich stay rich and the poor stay poor. Capitalism is so present around the world because the powerful fucking shit up for the lower class is just something humans do. Whether you support it or not, that's your 100% opinion. But capitalism is the tool the powerful use to stay in power in 2019. Humans do this to each other, and they will continue to do it until the end of time. Uh, global warming, which is definitely real and definitely an issue. I will make a video on uh, climate change. It's really the only issue I have with... Uh, global warming, which is definitely real and definitely an issue. I will make a video on uh, climate change. It's the really only issue I have with this whole situation. Because we have the technology and mankind can uh, limp on with uh, screwing over each other. But we are killing the planet. Alright, bye now. Oh, and you might have realized that I don't have any sources.